Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. Today, I just have a quick video for you with some sharpness comparisons for the new Nikon 600TC Z-mount lens. I've had a ton of questions from people asking how it compares to the 600F4E, the 800PF, and the Sony 600mm F4. So, I did some controlled testing and I'll share the results in this video. However, spoiler alert, all the lenses are outstanding. We're really comparing Ferraris and Lamborghinis here. If you're hoping to see a landslide win, you're going to be disappointed. Before we start, please keep a few things in mind. First, this is a very small sample size of lenses, and although I think it's representative of the lenses I tested, I was only able to test one copy of each lens, so potentially your results may vary. Next, this test was just a focus target I use, but it was very controlled. I'll pop a slide up that covers all the things that I do to ensure accuracy. Feel free to pause if you're curious about my methodology. Finally, all these tests were at a relatively close range, like if you were in range for a frame filling gall. So results from different distances may vary. Still, I think these tests will give you a pretty good idea of how the lenses compare. Let's take a look at the results. Also, please forgive the difference in audio. I had to record the next segment from my office. Okay, so we're gonna start with the 600 millimeter against itself. So basically it's gonna be 600 millimeter on the left and the 600 millimeter with the built in TC engaged on the right. So let's take a look at how the sharpness compares. And these are 100% crops here. This is zoomed in at 100%. And as you can see, it is strikingly close. If you look at the text size samples lettering here and compare them, you can see that the straight 600 has a very slight advantage over the 600 with its TC engaged, but man, it is really, really close. And I'm seeing that across the frame here. Anytime I'm looking at comparing these back and forth, I see just a very, very slight advantage to the straight 600 versus the 600 with its TC engaged. If you look at, for example, the texture here, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but when I look at the texture here, it looks a little more defined than it does right here. And if we go over to this side and we look at some of the other reference points here, there's these little bullets and rules over here. And the hairline one is the one that I find very interesting because this little tiny bit right here really is the thickness of a human hair. It is very, very small. So just to kind of give you a perspective of what we're actually looking at here. And what this translates to in the real world isn't just sharp eyeballs, it's sharp capillaries and you know the lines in the iris, all of that stuff within the eyeball is also going to be ridiculously well-defined and sharp. And again, it does, look a little bit sharper without the TC engage, but it is so close that you wouldn't be able to tell which image was which without looking at XF data. And that is what I found when I've shot this lens in the real world is that I actually have to look at XF data to figure out whether or not I had the TC engaged. So the TC that's built into this is just absolutely extraordinary. And honestly, for me, this is like having a 600 prime and an 840 millimeter prime in one lens. It's that good. I don't think, in my opinion, there's no compromises here as far as I'm concerned from a practical field standpoint between using it straight 600 or using it at 840 millimeter. Next we have the 600 TC against the outgoing 600 F4E, the old F mount 600. If you can call it old, I just had that lens a few weeks ago. So let's take a look at how they compare. Now if we zoom in, we can see that, once again, the 600TC is on the left. We can see that the 600TC does have a little bit of an edge. If we look at like these letters and numbers here, we can see that they're a little more crisp and a little better contrast. That's not unexpected, but these lenses are incredibly close. And once again, I would say that if you were shooting both of these side by side, it would be very difficult to tell which lens you were using strictly from a sharpness standpoint. And as we get to this other side, the TC is actually looking a little better than my old lens. But keep in mind, my old lens had been pretty beat up and had seen a lot of use, so I may have knocked something out along the way so it's not quite as sharp on the right side as it was on the left. But either way, I would say that if you're looking at upgrading your existing 600F4E to one of these, I don't think sharpness is the main criteria. The main reason I would do the upgrade would mostly be because I didn't have to use an adapter anymore. I had a native Z-mount lens. I have all the Z-series controls on it, things like function rings and control rings and function buttons and all that good stuff, so that I'm getting more out of my Z camera than I am with just the old F-mount lens. And of course, the teleconverter. That's my main reason for the upgrade. But if you're looking at it from a sharpness standpoint, say, oh, I wanna 
you know, upgrade my lens so I get a little bit sharper results, you're not going to see a night and day difference. And again, lenses of this caliber you wouldn't expect to. All right, this time we're going to look at both the lenses at 840 millimeters. So we have the 600 TC with its teleconverter engaged on the left. And on the right, we have the 600 F4E with its teleconverter. And I do want to note that the teleconverter that I have, I had several of them over the course of the last few years, and I found a very, very good copy of it. So this is actually very, very close. If you look at these, you can see that there is an advantage to the TC. And I don't think anyone's going to be real surprised by that that it is slightly sharper as we look at some of these areas on the image. But the bottom line is that both are very close. If you have a very good copy of the 1.4 TC and you're putting it with the 600 F4E, you know, you're going to get halfway decent results. But again, if you look at the difference here, there is a little better contrast, a little better sharpness. And when I was looking at these images more in detail, that's pretty much what I found. And you can see it here. This is a really good example. You can see you know, the lettering here and compare it to here. This is just a little bit softer. But again, I want to emphasize from a practical field standpoint, I'm not sure if you would be able to tell which was which in the real world. Just looking at a test chart here, it's, you know, very, very close. So once again, I would not upgrade just based on sharpness alone. I would look at those other factors we discussed just a minute ago. Next, we have the 600TC with the teleconverter engaged versus the 800 PF. And this is by far one of my most requested comparisons. But the thing is, if you're hoping that one was gonna be way sharper than the other, I got some bad news for you. They're pretty much the same. It is very difficult to tell them apart. Uh, once again, the 600 TC is on the left. And as you can see, we have really good sharpness from both lenses. I think maybe the 800 PF might have a very, very, very slight advantage call it 2% or something, but it's not significant. So I, once again, I'm going to go back to it and say, you know, I think from a practical field standpoint, if you were to look at both of these lenses, images taken with both of these lenses side by side, it would be pretty much impossible to tell whether or not it was taken with the 600 TC or the 800 PF. They're both really, really great lenses. I do think the PF might have a very slight advantage, but it is absolutely minimal. So there you go. If you were hoping to have a slam dunk one way or the other here, it's just not happening. You're going to have to make your purchase decision based on other criteria. Next, we're going to do the 600TC versus the 600F4GM Sony lens because I've had a lot of Sony users or Nikon users or people thinking about which system they want to use. They wanted to know, you know how these two lenses compare. So let's take a look. So let's zoom in and I feel like a broken record, but once again, it is very, very close. Looking at these side by side, I mean, these are really, really close. Uh, I think the Nikon might have a little bit better contrast, at least like in the reds and the blues here, but the Sony looks like it could be just ever so slightly sharper, but if it is, it's like, again, by just a few percentage points. I mean, it is incredibly close. So if you look at this stuff here, if we look at this uh, hairline thing, the Sony exposed a little brighter at the same exposure. I'm not sure why. So just look at sharpness, not brightness. But these look to me like they are just really, really close. I think that, again, I, looking at this, it looks like the Sony might be just ever so slightly sharper looking at some of the lettering and stuff here. But once again, I mean, from a practical field standpoint, you're not going to be able to tell these two lenses apart. They are both extremely good. So if you were trying to decide between Nikon and Sony based on the sharpness of their 600s, I don't think this is going to help you at all because they're both incredibly good. And finally, let's wrap this up with the 600TC with the teleconverter engaged against the 600F4 Sony with the teleconverter attached. So we zoom in, take a look, and once again, it is incredibly close. However, as I was looking through these images and I'm looking through them with you now, I do think that the Nikon has a slight advantage over the Sony. You can see it's just a little more crisp and the contrast is just a little bit better. And I don't think that's a huge surprise considering the teleconverter in the Nikon lens is built for that particular lens. But once again, incredibly close. I don't think you'd be able to see a difference in the field. Both of these are really, really good. And as we go through and look at these, it does seem like, although the Nikon does have an edge, it's 
not enough that I would make a decision based on this minor difference in teleconverter performance. And again, it's just so incredibly close here. So those are the tests. Now, first, I know that it's common among photographers to obsess over minor details, like this lens is 2% sharper than that one. But the truth is, any of these lenses are gonna blow you away. Overall, I'd use any of these lenses or lenses and TC combos without hesitation for professional work. And you know what? I do. All of them are simply outstanding. And if you're trying to choose between any of these lenses based on which is sharper, I think you'll need to find other criteria. I seriously doubt anyone could look at actual wildlife photos from these lenses and tell which lens or combo of lens and teleconverter is the sharpest. Everything tested in this video goes well beyond adequate sharpness and is deep within outstanding territory bordering on insanely sharp. I honestly think the biggest limiting factor with these optics is the photographer's technique. Also, I've just updated my book, The Ultimate Nikon Z9 Setup and Shooting Guide for Wildlife Photography for the Z9 Firmware 3.0. The book covers how I set each of my menus for wildlife work, why I set them the way I do, and how I leverage those settings in the field. Check it out. It's a must-have for every Z9 shooter. I'll put a link for it in the card above and in the description area for this video. As always, I hope you'll stop by my site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss any of my videos, articles, or book releases. And as always, I'd love it if you would like, subscribe, and get notified. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.